Recently, I've been asked how to display pots, how to show pots off in your garden so that they really add to the garden design. Pots and planters can do so much. For example, they can add colour where you need a bit of colour. They can fill a gap in the border. They can frame doorways and pathways. They can enable you to grow plants that you couldn't normally grow in your soil. And there's potscaping, which is arranging groups of pots so that they really look beautiful. It's like landscaping, only for pots. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog, and I'm here with Diane Perry, whose garden is lovely even without the pots, but she has really used pots beautifully to make the garden even better. So I'm going to ask her for her top tips. So Diane, when you start thinking about pots, what's the first thing you think about? The first thing is what the pot looks like. Is it going to be attractive and um, does it blend with its surroundings? So um, also what size it is for the type of plant that's going into the pot. Obviously good drainage and uh, the location for where I'm going to place it. Whether I'm going to do it on its own or whether I'm going to put it with others. That, that's the key element for the pot. Um, when we're buying them, we want to buy them frost hardy because we get a lot of cold winds up here and frost and so forth. Um, we ha also have a lot of pots that are inherited, very old things made out of old fashioned concrete from the 1960s, which I was only saying yesterday when I looked at one of them, how much it still looks like stone. So finding some old things, you know, it doesn't all have to be very sophisticated. But if I'm going to buy or choose something to use in a more prestigious area like the front door, then obviously I go for something a little more attractive, perhaps in ceramic. You've used pots here to frame your doorway, and that's a particularly good use of pots. Would you tell me more about how you decided to do that? Well, we've just had the front door area repainted and rejigged and I have to say it was always the non area of the house and it's not a very wide area so um, putting big pots there which is I love big pots was a little bit more of um, a challenge but we bought a couple of fairly standard larger size ceramic pots both the same color on dishes and they have skimmier in them and skimmier is evergreen it's it needs ericaceous soil and of course most of what we have here is chalk based and clay so um, those are perfect sort of ingredient to use the skimmier by the door and the fact that it's evergreen it really is lovely we've had them in the pots now for three years so I've now got the challenge of putting the plants because they've they're outgrowing the the pot I've now got the challenge of transferring them to the garden beds and so I've got to find an ericaceous place. So that's where pots are really, really useful for the plants you want to get a specific purpose. I see you using pots to grow plants that actually can be quite difficult to grow, like hostas are presumably much easier to grow in pots because you can keep the slugs and snails away from them. So w tell me more about that. Well, they're amongst my most favorite plants and if you manage to care for them well, then, um, they really are fantastic throughout spring and summer. They're just going over at the moment. Um, we've had no slugs. The only thing perhaps I've had to worry about is making sure that they're very well watered and fed a couple of times during the year. It's the feeding that one tends to forget about. So literally every night um, they're watered and given a really good soak. They stand on dishes. And so also, you know, you know that they've had enough water. If there's water at the bottom, um, you don't overwater them, obviously. But also the feeding, um, a good liquid fertiliser, um, tomato feed is really good. And probably a couple of times in the season, at least. And, and that really helps them thrive. Pots can add a fantastic bit of colour and shape to a gap in the border. Can you tell me how you do that in your garden? Well, it's exactly that. If I have a gap, I hate it when we get to August, uh, the end of August, and everything starts to die back, um, especially now in September. We had a very early summer, and so I find things are dying back quite early, and I have to 
prune back or, or cut back the dead heads and big gaps are coming. And so I use some of the old pots, those concrete pots I was telling you about, because they blend into the, the background and they don't look so, it doesn't look so obvious that you've put pots in the, in the borders. Um, and it gives you instant colour for, you know, another month or so. And potscaping is the art of arranging pots so that they look really beautiful all together. And you've got a wonderful potscape here. So can you tell us how you do it and what your top tips are for that? Well, at one time I wanted to keep around the kiln of the house quite clear. And it took me a long time to actually decide to do pots. But once I've decided, I'm, I'm getting pot mania now. And basically, I, I don't worry that they, they don't all match. Um, although it's nice to have a colour theme, or a blending of a colour theme. Uh, and I generally start by putting larger pots at the back or some at the front, but really angle the shape of how I'm laying them out. And I think it's quite good to put the odd smallish conifer, which you can then grow on and put into the garden later, at the back to give a bit more depth. You know, the green, the green, the strong green, for example. It's evergreen, so you can keep it in the pot for a long, a long while through to the wind, through the winter. Repot it on in the garden later, um, and then to have as well as that sort of height, I've I've mixed conifer, roses, uh, a lot of the geraniums and so forth, trailing plants as well, um, ivy growing up, which is now growing out of one of the wall pots, growing up the wall. So it's all evolving and at this time of the year the challenge now is to find something that will go through the winter and I think I'm looking for cyclamen for the next block of colour. And how about arranging colour in the pots that you've got out here on this terrace? Well we do tend to have um, quite a lot of pinks and blues simply because they're wonderful for attracting wildlife, bees. We've had masses of um, lovely honeybees and bumblebees and not so many wasps this year, but also um, loads of butterflies. And I think the purples are doing that, the purples and the blues. Because we did have quite a lot of agapanthus earlier on and they, they were really attracting the butterflies. Basically, um, they're planted at the beginning of the season from whatever source I've got, something I might have got from the garden centre or little bits of euphorbia plants that have self-seeded go into the pots and then a lot of the, um, the seasonal bedding plants that might go in. I would do that at the beginning of the season and then I'm constantly adding and retweaking because some things start to look a little sad after a while. So there's a lot of that. And probably I pot up twice a year. If you'd like more advice on planting up pots and containers, particularly for things like planters for your year-round colour, I've got a playlist at the end of this video. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.